What's up guys? So today's video is brought to you by Amar Talwar. No, I'm just kidding. It's not sponsored by anybody. Um, but he and I were on the phone this morning talking about gear, ironically, because I don't really talk that much about gear. And he suggested that I do this video. So here we are. We are now at gear review. Oh, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> this isn't really a review either. <laughs> it's just a lens that I use um, for wedding photography that most people use for wildlife photography. So even though I don't like to talk about gear, we're going to be talking about this today. So Amar, your next video needs to be about something kind of artsy since I'm doing a gear video. Now it's known that I like for my gear to be very light and the 200-500, even though it is heavy, it's definitely lighter than the 600. Um, the 600 millimeter also is fixed focal length, so I can't get any variation. Now, generally I do like my prime lenses, but I also use this lens mostly outside and the focal length of it is so long that the background just blurs out so easily and creamily. So, you know, I'm not concerned about stopping down using this lens either. It performs better uh, stop down a little bit too, even though I generally like to shoot wide open with my other lenses. I don't carry this lens. I can barely carry a 70 to 200 for more than a couple hours. I generally use this lens on a tripod after the bride and groom has walked down the aisle. Now, what I like to do is before the ceremony, before anything's happened, is we get the tripod in place where I want it and I get some basic settings and a basic idea to tell my second shooter what I want out of this lens or what I want out of the scene that I'm at. So when the ceremony actually begins, I will actually come back to check the settings of the camera to make sure it's exactly what I want. So the wonderful thing about having a good second shooter is getting the, okay, so I don't normally use a lot of images from a second shooter. However, uh, I do like to use images that I have specifically said, I want this image this way and they do that. So I need someone there to man the camera and I want them to be a professional photographer because if clouds come over or something, they're going to have to adjust the settings while keeping my vision in mind for the end result. Um, now, with that being said, I have let my son use this lens and he can handhold it just fine. I mean, he's young, uh, he's 18 now, but he's been using this lens since he was about 16. And uh, normally I will put some parameters in there for him because he is not a professional photographer yet and he does a great job, but I just wanna make sure that the moment is caught and it's not so overexposed or so underexposed that there's nothing I can do with it. So a lot of times I will use some sort of program mode for him, but I will just put in all the settings for him and he just can shoot in, in the ceremony situation. Now there are some times where I let him play uh, during the reception or something. But in this situation, I have a clear vision of what I want and I just tell my seconds or my son what I want to happen and then they just execute it. So basically, I like to use this lens for the ring exchange, um, any sort of uh, sand pouring or if there's something special going on, a cross being built and also for the kiss. Now, obviously I don't use this lens at every single wedding. <laughs> Small weddings, not a problem to get kind of close to the people because 70 to 200, it seems like a long focal length. 200 millimeters seems like a long focal length, but when you're in a, at an actual wedding, you'll see how short the focal length really is. So this is perfect to not have to really get up on people to get what I see in my head or what I want to show up in the album eventually. This lens obviously coming in at around $1,200 to $1,400 I think now. Um, it is obviously not the best glass in the world compared to say, <laughs> I mean, it's a fraction of the cost of a lot of other longer, especially prime lenses. But I think the advantages of this lens are that I can take it to a wedding, set it up on a tripod. We can zoom in and out if we want to. It's not as heavy as the 600 millimeter. Could you imagine showing up at a wedding with that? <laughs> the, the images that come out of it, I think are wonderful. I'm not really forfeiting quality to get my vision. I could bring the 600 along if I really, really wanted to. In the images, you'll see the vignetting really isn't terrible. 
Um, it can also easily be fixed. And honestly, I don't like to do a whole lot of editing in my images. I just click a preset that I like and maybe there might be an adjustment or two. And then I'm pretty much done besides checking white balance and stuff like that. I like to use Mastin presets and no, I'm not, this video is not sponsored by them. I like to use Mastin presets the best. I find that they really work well with my style and the vision that I have in my head for the end result of the image um, or no preset where I just add in a little bit of contrast and clarity. And this lens has been fantastic for my purposes with a uh, wedding. We don't use it much during receptions unless uh, it's during the toasting and sometimes we'll pop a flash on it. I don't like flash going directly at people unless we're outside and I like a Gary Fong to be on it just to kind of soften and fill. Uh, if we're in a reception hall, then I want the flash to go to the side. So I want the flash to point to the side wall so that, that way we get some sort of drama to match kind of the reception hall. I don't like the deer and head look, headlights look from flash. So with this lens and with any wedding photography, I find it's easier to keep a flash on camera if we're going to use flash and then bounce it either to a reflector, but usually a wall. Most of the images you're going to see are either without flash or with the flash pointed directly at the people with some sort of diffuser like the Gary Fong. And you probably won't even be able to tell that any flash was used because like I said, it's just kind of to fill in. We're not making dramatic portraits with this lens. We're using it for one specific purpose, which is the ring shot and the kiss shot and maybe some close-ups of people throughout the ceremony. I've never tested it out in terms of wildlife or speed but a fellow photographer of mine has this lens and he uses it for cycling, wildlife, things like that all the time. So we both really, really love this lens. And at the price point that it's at, I think it's fantastic to add it to your bag if you have enough people to help you with it. I know I always say that I carry the least amount of equipment possible, but at a larger wedding, this lens to me is non-negotiable to, I have to bring it because of the photos that I feel like I have to get for my couples. I love the close-up ring shots and I love the close-up kiss shots. I love being able to get the kiss from different angles and this, this lens has really done a wonderful job for me. In short, this lens is sharp, even at wide open, although it does perform better stop down. Um, this lens is really fast to focus, especially at longer focal lengths, which is what we use it for. As far as I've seen, the chromatic aberration is negligible. I've actually seen more chromatic aberration with my 85 1.4 um, and some of my prime lenses and well-coded lenses. I've seen more out of those than out of this one. So I love this lens and I think if you can get your hands on one, if you have purpose, if you have a purpose for it, then I definitely think you should get it. This lens has the vibration reduction if you need to use it for a wildlife or sports or whatever. Obviously, I don't need to use that, but it does have it, which is pretty cool. And I like how, even though it is a bigger lens, I like how small it is compared to say the 600. This lens is really comparable to the 70 to 200 when it's, um, well, I'll just show you. But as you can see, it's actually not that big compared to the 70 to 200. It is larger, but it's comparable. It is heavier than the 70 to 200. And generally I use it with the D5 on the tripod. I think the image quality with this lens and the D5 is better than the image quality with this lens, the D850 and the D800, which we've tested, but I don't have those shots available to show you. This isn't a comparison video. It's just a information for, you know, how we use it in our wedding photography. So this is what it looks like when it's not extended. And then this is what it looks like when we're at 500 millimeters. So unextended, you could easily put this in a bag. This was a gorgeous wedding and it was very, very far the way the bride and her father were coming around. Fountain. I knew I wanted some framing in this image and the set of images of them coming around. And the only way for us to be able to do that was to use this long lens. So my son was actually holding this lens and I had the ISO parameters and minimum shutter speed put in for the These were taken with the 70 to 200 and as you see that we're nowhere near the actual ceremony yet. Of course this ring shot here, we couldn't have gotten this close without having this lens. 
at this wedding there was no down the middle of the aisle so the only way to get uh, a shot that was more straight on would be from the back of everybody and we would have to use a very long lens to be able to get that shot this next one is with the preacher and um one of the things that we love about this lens is isolating people even when there's people close together so we get wonderful shots of other people in the ceremony so the preachers that want to buy the images these were shot at a lake and while they had a beautiful beautiful arbor i also wanted to get some just standalone no arbor just that white blown out background this is as close as we could get with 70 to 200. This is another example of the separation of the background and the subject and the beauty of this lens and being able to go in and get these shots. Another example of the gorgeous out of focus elements that other people may want to purchase for photographs of themselves. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that it encourages you to step outside of your comfort zone and add some variety to your lenses. You never know when you're gonna need them. You never know what kind of situation you're going to be in. Thank you so much for watching guys. If this video helped you in any way, go ahead and subscribe and thumbs up. And if you hated it, please tell me why. And I will see you guys next time.